Wuxin, Wuxin O-Chang. The KG D2000 Monoband UHF DMR HT today on Ham Radio 2.0. Hey guys, good afternoon. My name's Jason. I'm KC5HWB. If this is your first time to join us here, please click on the subscribe button below. Keep up with all the videos that we do. Going to be a few more DMR radios upcoming on this channel, which um, should surprise no one. Walks on. I pronounce it walks on because that's the way it's spelled. Uh, Richard Richard Lenore uh, at Main Trading Company pronounces it Wuxin. He says that's the Paris, Texas way to pronounce it, Wuxin. <laughs> if you look up W-O-U-X-U-N on Google Translate and ask how to pronounce it in Mandarin Chinese, it's pronounced O-Chang. I don't know. I guess I don't speak Mandarin Chinese very well. <laughs> anyway, this is the second model of DMRHT to come from Wuxin, O-Chang out of China. It is monoband. It is uh, UHF. And it is yeah, monoband UHF. Let me get some stats on it re real quick because I don't even know what those are. Uh, true Tier 2 DMRHT, obviously. I wouldn't be re reviewing it otherwise. A thousand channels, a thousand contacts, 250 receiving groups, 250 zones. That's pretty normal. Um... So kind of standard out of the box stuff without uh, a little bit behind a couple of the other Chinese manufacturers. You know, the TYT stuff will hold 100,000 contacts now. The Anytone holds 150,000. So this one's only limited to 1,000. But it is very heavy duty feeling. And, yeah, the menu kind of looks like, well, it's a little bit different. Utilities. It's kind of the same thing we're used to seeing with the TYT and the uh, Baofeng 1701 and the uh, Redivis RT84 menus. A little bit different, but a little bit the same also. I'll get a close-up of the menu here in a minute. Uh, let me start my screen cap software here and show you guys what the... Programming software looks like, which uh, you can see right here on the screen now. Obviously, this is uh, going to be very familiar to those of you who are experienced with DMR. This uh, the side of it there contains the uh, the the connection for the programming cable, which looks to be proprietary. It's one of these blade style connectors that connects like that with the pins on the, uh, the the flat pins on the side goodness need like a coin or something to open it a small screwdriver yeah Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so we're going to put this on the side here. It's a nice snug connection for sure. And then, doesn't look like there's a chip or anything in the end of the USB cable, but since it's got a what, what appears to be a proprietary um, connector on the side of the radio, I'm sure you're going to need... The actual cable that comes with the radio, which is nothing new for those folks who are used to DMR. Let's go ahead and click on read here. And, okay. I have not installed any drivers, uh, anything separate. Uh, and this is what came up in the radio. You can see all this stuff right here. Contacts. One, two, three. Okay. Zones. <laughs> That's a funny name for a zone. Basic information you see here. General says so. This is all pretty. This is all pretty standard. Um, here's the Waxon.com site. Uh, not to be confused with Waxon.us. This is Waxon China. Ochang. 
Oh, Chang, China. I should say it right, I guess. Uh, let's see. And then we can go... There's a... Now, the D901... It was their first attempt, I believe. This D901 right here was their first attempt. And when I looked it up, it showed... Several sites, sh sites uh, showed it to be discontinued. Um, I think Buy 2A Radio had it for discontinued. And um, uh, one other... Radiotity, maybe? I don't know, somewhere like that. I can't remember exactly where I found it. But that specific one showed... APRS GPS. This is new to me. This one does not have... There's no indication that this one has GPS on it. Uh, let's see. It doesn't show in the menu on the radio. And there's nothing in here. So as far as I know, this doesn't have GPS on it. But this one, I... Uh, no, not that one. I'm just Googling here, which you guys can do yourself, obviously. But I've been unable to find anyone actually selling this radio in the United States yet. That's really what I was looking for. I was really looking for um, somebody who's carrying this radio in the United States and for a link to put in there. I'll put a link in there for the... Uh, ooh, that's a... That doesn't look like the UV9D. Oh, that's the UV9D+. Plus. Um, I'll put a link in there into the description of, of YouTube. Go into to the YouTube video in the description, and I'll put a link to the, the Ochang page, the official Ochang page from it. But as far as I can tell right now, close out model. Okay, so this is where this is where I got the, the idea that the KGD901, which the KGD901 was the first ever DMR radio that Waxon came out with, and this was a while ago. So maybe they have an updated model now. That's the APRS and GPS and um, this other one I've seen over here. Yeah, the, it says APRS, and um, I don't know if it's actually APRS. It says APRS GPS. As far as I know right now, the Anytone is the only one that has a true APRS menu. Um, the only radio out of China that has a true APRS menu. But I was under the impression this D901 had been discontinued because of Buy 2A Radios has it for closeout price right now. See, availability discontinued right there. So this one is the D2000. Okay, because if you Google Waxon DMR, you're going to get two models, the D901 and the D2000. The D2000 is this new one. This one's a really heavy-duty feeling radio. It's, it's, it's a little bit thicker this way, this way than a couple of your other DMR radios. It's got two knobs on the top, you know, similar to what the uh, Redivus RT84 had. It comes with a, uh, where is it, 1900 milliamp hour battery. Um, it's got the connections on the back of the radio for the belt clip. So if you get a new battery, the belt clip is still, still going to be on the actual body of the radio itself, not on the battery. So that's good. And, um, you know, it's got a really good and sleek feel to it, honestly. Um, I'll show you guys the menu here in a second, but that is... Um, what the software looks like right there and the channels it comes with. So let's take a look at the menu real quick. All right, so this is the screen and it looks like, you know, kind of like the MD380 screen but updated. Or like a dual band screen with only one display. So menu, actually top button is the menu. Zone attachment. I assume you can probably load contacts or something else in it with that. So the zone, <laughs> see a Chinese zone, that's that one that was all question marks on the screen. Utilities, well hold on, let's make sure. Um, not wait. There's no DNA next to the D or A next to the channel, so I'm unfamiliar as whether that's a DMR program radio. Okay, no password for the program radio. All 
repeater slot. I'm going to guess that's an analog channel. It won't even go into repeater slot. All right, let me put a let me put a digital channel into it real quick. Okay, I went back and made sure we were looking at an anal at a digital channel, which we were looking at an analog channel before. By the way, I tried to put in this digital channel to the to the zone one. It says zone one down there on the bottom, and I already had 16 channels. It wouldn't let me add it. So 16 channel limit zone on this radio as well. But now that we've got a digital channel in here, which again those were all analog, we've got a lot more menu options. So contacts. That kind of thing. New contact, so you can add a contact. Group call or private call. Um, we can go to, let's go here. Nope. Utilities, program radio. Yeah. Radio number. Oh, so you can change your, that's my DMR ID. Change that on the fly. That's kind of cool. Right there. Zone. Zone 1 selected. Okay, so it doesn't give you the option to add a channel from the zone menu. Utilities. Radio settings. Here are all the, your standard menus in the radio settings. Mode. So you can change it to channel mode or memory mode. Let's go. Channel mode. Nope. You're still in the zone. So there's no VFO. I thought that might unlock a VFO. And there might be a firmware update that does that later on, but... Um, you know, being that this is a mono band, that's probably why you're not really finding much so you can go in here and program and edit it you can edit the channel obviously I'm not seeing a way to actually add a channel there's nothing usually in, the, in other models of other DMR models that I'm used to seeing you can go here and you can go and once you select the zone it brings you up another menu, and you can add a channel, you can select the zone, or you can edit the zone, like edit the zone uh, zone name. This one's not allowing you to do that. Program radio. So there's no add channel. So you can edit a channel, you can put in a bunch of channels and edit it later on, but there's no add channel option in this radio, at least not with this firmware. At the time of this recording, this is the latest firmware. Uh, versions. Firmware 2.12 or 2.012. So I have to go out there and see if they've released something. I updated the firmware on it last week. Um, but this video will post sometime after that because it's got to be put in the pipe with the rest of my videos. So here we go. So anyway, yep, call log, that's normal. Usually have a call log missed, answered, outgoing contacts so here's a zoom out of the uh, kind of what the body looks like it's got a nice kind of curved look to it here two buttons here one button up there the alert button on the top oh that turns on the flashlight <laughs> so the alert button up top turns on usually that's programmable from the CPS there's a side view of where the connector connects here's the uh, here's the programming cable what it looks like there's the back and there it is overall it's really a nice looking radio I just really wish it was dual band so that is the first ever DMR HT from Waxon that I've reviewed I didn't get a chance to grab the uh, the D901 and I'll have to go back to Waxon and see if there's a, a plus model or a second model of that D901 because the listing that buy 2 a radio has for the D901 that's, dis that's discontinued does not show that it's a GPS model. So perhaps they released the D901, discontinued it, released this, and now they've got a new version of the D901. 
I don't know. Who's got one of these? Anybody use one of these before? Put your comments below. Let me know how you like it. It seems, like I said, it seems like a really slick looking radio. I really like the size of it. Um, I like the size of the body. I like all the buttons and the features on it. Um, presumably, once, um, you know, Waxon's a little bit new to the DMR game. But presumably, once uh, they get a couple of firmware updates up there, I'll have to go look and see if there's been one. By the time I post this video, there might be another firmware update out there, and I'll check that out and be sure and update it and maybe do a follow-up video on this later on. But uh, who's? Uh, let me know in the comments below if you're, if you're using one of these and uh, what you think about it. And if you've got a D901 with the GPS feature, uh, let me know that too and let me know what you think about that. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.